السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures I'm gonna cover today the development of the respiratory system I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University In my presentation I'm gonna cover the following objectives in the development of the respiratory system I will talk about the development of the larynx then the trachea the bronchial system and finally the lungs and then I will talk a little bit about the anomalies of the respiratory system uh, let's start first with the anatomy of the respiratory system uh, the bronchial tree here we can see the trachea and uh, its division into two main or primary bronchi right bronchus and left bronchus then each bronchus divides into um, secondary bronchi or lobar bronchi in the right side we have three uh, lobar bronchi upper middle and lower while in the left we have only two lobar bronchi upper and lower that's why uh, in the right lung we have three loops upper loop middle loop and lower loop while in the left lung we have only two loops upper and lower loops uh, if we remove the lungs and look at the division of the uh, bronchial tree like I said in the right side we have the right bronchus and um, if you compare the alignment of the right bronchus to the left bronchus the right bronchus is in more um, in line with the trachea runs in an oblique course while the left one runs more or less into a horizontal course so this is the primary right bronchus the primary right bronchus divides into three lower bronchi upper middle and lower then each lower bronchus divides into what's called the segmental bronchi or tertiary bronchi and then the bronchi uh, divides more and more and more and gets smaller to form the uh, terminal uh, bronchioles and then the terminal bronchioles divide more and more to form the respiratory uh, bronchioles and then we end up with the alveolar duct sac and alveoli here for lung development in comparison to the other organs in the body they start their development in the embryonic period and carry on their development in the fetal period and even after birth why because unlike other organs the lung is not functioning during intrauterine life because there is no gas exchange there is no breathing the only function of the lung during intrauterine life is to share in the formation and secretion of the amniotic fluid through its uh, epithelial lining cells that's why the lung starts its development in the embryonic period which extends from um, the first week of pregnancy till week 8 of pregnancy and then carry on uh, uh, during the fetal period till birth and even after birth in the first few years in life so uh, in the embryonic period there is the genesis or organogenesis of the lung main components and then in the fetal period there is maturation of the lung the maturation of the lung passes into four stages the pseudoglandular stage the canalicular stage the saccular stage and the alveolar stage these are the four main stages for lung maturation and of course from the 24th week of development till birth there is the secretion of this substance which is called the surfactant which helps in a maturation of the lung let's start with the development of the respiratory system or let's know how the respiratory system develops uh, in this picture you can see a side view of an embryo this is uh, the head region so this is the pharyngeal arches or pharyngeal apparatus and here is the primitive pharynx and this and this is the foregut the mid gut and this is the hind gut and even here the liver is starting to develop so the first appearance of the respiratory primordium is during the fourth week of development there is a bud here it's called the laryngotracheal diverticulum or laryngotracheal bud appears in the ventral wall of the primitive pharynx 
close to the fourth and sixth pharyngeal pouches. If we take a side view of this area, uh, the yellow tube here represented the four guts and the blue one represented the respiratory diverticulum. We're going to see the following. First, they communicate with each other. Then, uh, they separate from each other by the appearance of two folds of mesoderm. Uh, these folds are called the tracheoesophageal folds. Uh, these folds will approach each other and form a septum. As a result, there would be separation between these two uh, tubes. So, we'll, we will end up with a ventral laryngotracheal tube. From its upper part, the larynx will be formed and still communicate with the, uh, through its opening with the uh, pharynx. And the distal part will develop into the trachea and the bronchial tree and the rest of the lung. While the dorsal uh, part or the dorsal tube will develop into oropharynx and the uh, esophagus. If we start with the development of the larynx, here again, this is the oropharynx, this is the uh, esophagus, and this is the beginning of the formation of the stomach, and this is the respiratory diverticulum here. In this view, we are taking um, a look at the ventral uh, wall of the pharynx from inside. So you can see on the periphery the pharyngeal arches. This is number two, three, four, five is rudimentary, and this is number six. Okay, so uh, the beginning of the appearance of the larynx is like a slit shaped opening here that appears at the ventral wall of the pharynx. With further development, this slit shaped opening transforms into a T shaped opening because of the appearance of three uh, swellings. The epiglottic swelling and two arytenoid swelling, transforming the laryngeal opening into a T-shaped uh, opening, like this. So the epithelium of the larynx is derived from the endodermal lining of the cranial end of the laryngotracheal tube, which is derived, of course, from the foregut. While the cartilage forming uh, the larynx is derived from the mesoderm of the uh, pharyngeal arches, so the epiglottis, the yellow one here, comes from the third and fourth pharyngeal arches. The thyroid cartilage is derived from the fourth arch, and the rest of the laryngeal cartilages are derived from the sixth pharyngeal arch. What about the muscles and nerves of the larynx? Uh, for the muscles, you know that. We have many muscles for the larynx. The cricothyroid, the one that is responsible for tension of the vocal cords, uh, is derived from the fourth uh, pharyngeal arch, while the rest of the muscles of the larynx are derived from the sixth pharyngeal arch. And this explains the nerve supply as well. Uh, so we have two types of nerves, the superior laryngeal nerve and its branch, the external laryngeal nerve, is the one responsible for supplying the muscles that is derived from the fourth arch, while the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a nerve of the sixth arch, that's why it supplies the rest of the uh, laryngeal muscles, which are also derived from the sixth arch. Uh, then we move to the uh, formation of the trachea and bronchi. Uh, we will uh, see that the laryngotracheal diverticulum, this one, branches into left and right primary bronchial buds. And you can notice that the right bronchial bud lies more obliquely than the left. And this relation would be kept uh, in the adult too. Uh, then branching is directed by the interaction of the epithelium or the endoderm of uh, the laryngotracheal diverticulum with the underlying splanchnic mesoderm. So if we look at this diagram, this is the start of the development of the uh, respiratory diverticulum in the fourth week of development, and this is the pharynx, and then it divides into two uh, lung buds or bronchial buds 
and each part then will divide into other branches. So by the fifth week, there will be elongation, branching, and the budding of the two bronchial buds, giving rise to the secondary or lower bronchi. That's why on the right side we can see three lower uh, division or three secondary uh, bronchi, while in the left we can see only two secondary uh, or lower bronchi because we have only two loops here in the left lung. With further development, there will be dichotomous branching or splitting of uh, these uh, bronchial buds. It will carry on up to the 10th week of development, leading to the formation of the segmental bronchi. Then we have up to 24 orders of branches are generated. Uh, so we end up with the formation of the terminal bronchiole. So the carry on with the division of the uh, bronchial buds, we will have eventually the terminal bronchiole. We need to know that uh, the endoderm of the laryngo uh, tracheal diverticulum will give rise to the epithelial lining of the whole respiratory system, while uh, the splanchnic mesoderm around this uh, diverticulum will give rise to the smooth muscles and the supporting cartilage of the respiratory system. Also, in the same time, uh, the pulmonary arteries and veins develop in parallel with the conducting portion of the lungs and follow the same branching pattern as you see in this diagram. Back to this picture again to summarize the stages of the development and maturation of the lung. Uh, remember that I said the, the lung starts its development in the embryonic period and carry on its maturation and differentiation in the fetal period up to the time of birth and even in the first few years of life. Uh, so in the embryonic period, there, there will be the appearance of the uh, respiratory diverticulum and formation of the larynx, uh, trachea, and the primary bronchi, and so on. This embryonic phase is overlapped with another phase called pseudoglandular phase. It starts uh, from the fifth week of development up to the sixteenth week of development, and in this phase, most of the a respiratory uh, tract is forming up to the level of the terminal bronchioles. In the pseudoglandular phase, uh, gas exchange is not possible. Therefore, if the fetus is born uh, at this time, he cannot survive. Then we have the canalicular phase, which extend between the uh, period of the 16th week of development up to 26th week of development. In uh, this stage, the respiratory uh, bronchioles are formed, also the alveolar ducts are formed. This is the terminal bronchioles, they get enlarged, and here is the beginning of the formation of the respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar ducts. Also, we can notice in this stage the increase in the vascularity and they become in close contact with the uh, alveolar ducts. Gas exchange could be possible at this stage. That's why if the baby is born at this stage, she or she can survive with proper care of course. Next we have the secular phase. It extends uh, from the 24th week of development till the time of birth. In this stage, uh, more maturation occurs in the lung, and uh, the terminal sex or the primitive alveoli form. This is the primitive alveoli or uh, terminal sex uh, are formed. They are lined by two types of cells uh, type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. The type 1 pneumocytes are flat and um, they are responsible for the gas exchange. And type 2 pneumocytes are responsible for the production of this uh, substance, which is called the surfactant or surface contact agent, uh, which starts its uh, secretion uh, early in this secular phase and extends till the time of birth. And this surfactant or agent is responsible for 
preventing the, uh, the alveoli from collapsing during expiration. They uh, decrease the surface tension uh, of the alveoli, so they prevent their collapse during expiration. So it is very essential for uh, the baby to survive. Also, in this secular phase, uh, capillaries get in close contact with the alveoli. That's why gas exchange is permissible at this stage and the baby can survive but can suffer a little bit if the, because of the lack of the surfactant. But of course, with a proper care, he can survive. And next, we have uh, the final stage of uh, development of the, or ma and the maturation of the lungs, which is called the alveolar stage. It, it extends from uh, the eight months of uh, pregnancy uh, till the early years in childhood life, maybe up to eight years of age. In this stage, more alveoli uh, are added and more maturation of the lung is achieved. What about the anomalies of the respiratory system? Uh, we have anomalies regarding uh, the separation or septation between the respiratory diverticulum and the foregut. And uh, this occurs if there is a deviation of the tracheoesophageal septum backwards. So we will end up with what is called the tracheoesophageal histole. So if we imagine that this is the tracheoesophageal uh, septum and it deviates backward during development, so we will end up with the following. This is the trachea and the bronchi and this is the esophagus. So if there is deviation of the tracheoesophageal septum backwards, uh, we will have two pieces of the esophagus, the upper one in the blindly and the lower part uh, will open into the back of the trachea by a fistula. Or sometimes there is no communication between the upper and lower parts of the esophagus or even with the trachea. So there is a trachea. Or uh, there will be communication between the esophagus and the back of the trachea, like this. Or both the upper and lower ends of the esophagus open separately into the trachea by two separate fistulae. Or just the upper part will open with a fistula at the back of the trachea and the lower uh, part of the esophagus is a blind pouch. Uh, also in the lungs we can have another anomaly which is very serious it's called respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, this anomaly develops because of the um, surfactant is insufficient. Uh, the air blood uh, surface membrane tension becomes very high so the alveoli will collapse during expiration and this is of course a common cause of death in premature infants because of the lack of uh, surfactant excretion um, and the collapsed uh, alveoli contain fluid as you can see in this uh, picture with high protein content and many hyaline membranes so in autopsy it gives the appearance uh, of a solid um, organ like a liver. Other anomalies regarding the development of the lungs is one uh, called congenital cysts of the lung. In this anomaly there is dilatation of terminal or larger bronchi and these cysts may be small or multiple giving the lung a honeycomb appearance. Uh, these cysts drain poorly that's why there is a stagnation of secretion inside them and super added infection uh, over them so the, the baby uh, or the child always suffer from chronic chest infection. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening and I hope you like it. Please do not forget to subscribe, like and share.